Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. So earlier we already looked at what it takes to have the equation of a line and we looked at kind of the classic form which is um, what we'd call slope intercept form where we have y is equal to mx plus b where y is the slope or movement and b is the intersect for the y-axis or the starting point of the line. Now when we're looking at equations of parallel lines, they're all going to have something in common and that will give us a little bit of extra information when we're looking at parallel lines. First off, we have three lines that are parallel here. Notice that they're going up at the same rate and they're coming through the axis at different points. So when I look at these three equations, I can look for some commonality here. y is equal to 2x minus 3, y is equal to 2x plus 1, and y is equal to 2x plus 5. Notice that in these, all three of them have the same slope. And that makes sense for parallel lines because parallel lines have the same rate of increase or that same slant to them from one to the next. If they didn't have that same increase or that same slant, well, that means that they'd eventually intersect, which we know parallel lines do not do. Practically then, all I need to remember for the equations of parallel lines is that they will have the same slope. So parallel lines have the same slope. But then that brings me to, well, how do I use this? Well, first off, it makes questions like this first one really easy. What is the slope of a line parallel to y equals 1 fourth x minus 19? Well, first off, I know my answer should look like a slope, so I want m equals. And if it's parallel to this line, that means it has the same slope of, as this line. And since this line is in slope-intercept form, that means that its slope is 1 fourth and the line parallel to it will also have a slope of 1 fourth. So then I would be done. But of course, most of them are going to be a little bit harder. And this tends to be the like stereotypical question that you get with parallel lines and the equations of them. So let's say that we want the equation of a line, not just its slope, that's parallel to y equals 1 fourth x minus 19, and that passes through the point to negative 6. Well here, I know I want the equation of a line. And since I want the equation of a line, that means that I want something in the form of y equals mx plus b, or some other form. But I like this one the most, so this is the one I'm going to work with. And in order to fill in this equation of a line, I know I need to find m, and I need to find b. So I'm going to separate them out so I know that these are the two things I'm looking for. And notice that this serves as my guide to the entire problem, so it's helpful to actually write it out. Now, the next thing that I have for pieces of information is I'm told that this one is parallel to the given line here, y equals 1 fourth x minus 19. When I know that lines are parallel, I know that they have the same slope. So I can take the slope given to me in this line, 1 fourth, and I can drop it into here. Now you might be tempted to grab this negative 19, which we know would be the B of this equation, and drop it down here. The problem is, just because lines are parallel does not mean that they have the same B value or intercept. In fact, usually if they're parallel, it means they're not the same line, so you're not going to actually have that same B value. So this right here, this 19, doesn't actually tell me anything. And I like to cross it out so I know I don't grab it by accident later. But I do have one other piece of information. I know that it goes through the point to negative 6. So let's label that point x, y. I still need to find my b value. And currently what I know is the following. I know that y is equal to 1 fourth x plus b, where our 1 fourth is our slope. I also know that I have this point to negative 6. If I want to find b, what I'm going to need to do is fill in every variable in the formula except for b. And since I know that y is negative 6 when x is 2, I can fill those into this equation and end up 
having only b left as a variable that's not filled in. And that means I can solve. So this is going to give me 1 fourth times 2, 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. So I've got 1 half plus b is equal to negative 6. When I subtract to get b by itself, I end up with negative 6 and a half is equal to b. So now that I have these two things, I can fill them into my original formula to give myself the equation of a line. And since I've now filled in the two missing pieces, I know that my answer is complete. But while there are special things with parallel lines, there are also special things with perpendicular lines. And perpendicular lines are lines that meet at a 90 degree angle. So we're going to see things like that little 90 degree mark in the corner, which we can see on this picture, and we can also see on this one. So once more, just like before, we're going to look at the pattern in a couple lines here. So we know that these two lines are perpendicular, and here I have the equation y equals 3x minus 1, and here I have the equation y equals negative 1 third x minus 2. Down here, I have y is equal to 4 thirds x plus 1, and over here, I have y is equal to a positive 3 fourths x minus 2. Notice how what's happening each time is they're taking a fraction, like 1 third, that negative 1 third, from this slope. And in order to get the slope of the other one, they're taking its reciprocal, 3 over 1, and they're turning it to the opposite value. So it was negative here going down, it's going to be positive going up. And where it was 1 third, it's now 3 over 1. Down here, you can see the same sort of pattern. Let's start with this slope. Like, let's say we had this slope 3 fourths. Well, the line perpendicular to it would have to have an opposite slope because it's going to have to go down to get that 90 degree angle. It's also going to have to have the rise over 1 run flip-flopped, and that's going to give us that negative 4 thirds. So what we're doing here is we're finding a slope by taking the opposite reciprocal. Opposite meaning we went from positive to negative or vice versa. And reciprocal, of course, means that if you have a fraction A over B, it switches to B over A. Now notice that these numbers will not be the same. It's just going to be the process that you go to to get that opposite reciprocal slope. So if you are given a question where you want the slope of a line, so m, that is perpendicular to y equals 1 fourth x minus 19, well, all I need to worry about here is the slope, because I'm going to take the slope here, change it to its reciprocal, where it was 1 fourth, it's now going to be 4 over 1, and I'm going to change it to its opposite. It was positive, now it's negative. Now, typically, we don't write negative 4 over 1 this way. We typically just write negative 4 since 4 divided by 1 is just 4. And so negative 4 divided by 1 is just negative 4. And we would be done at this point. And just like before, we can use all of this to find the full equation of lines that are perpendicular that go through specific points. So we're going to follow through with that process. And let's start just like before. As soon as you see equation of line, go ahead and give yourself a guideline. I want y equals mx plus b. Next, tell yourself what am I going to be looking for in order to fill this in? Well, I want a slope and I want an intercept. Well, I know that if this line is perpendicular, perpendicular tells me that I'm going to have a slope that's going to be the opposite reciprocal of the given slope. So I had the slope 1 fourth. I now want its opposite reciprocal, which we found above was negative 4. Just like before, where it goes through the axis actually will not matter in terms of this line. So the given line here, this negative 19, that doesn't actually tell me much because in order for it to be perpendicular, it doesn't actually matter where it goes through the axis. It only matters that it hits at that 90 degree angle. So this would be perpendicular in the same way that this is. And you notice that these two would be parallel. Um, they're going to have the same slope because they're opposite reciprocals of the same number. 
So what we're going to end up doing then is ignoring this 19, and I'm going to cross it out so I remember I don't need that right now. And I am given one other piece of information, and that's that it goes through the point 2, 6. Well, I do know that while this B does not tell me anything that I need right now, I do still need to find a B in order to have a full equation of a line that's perpendicular to this one and goes through this point. So how can I find B? Well, just like before, what I can do is I can fill in the formula with the information that I currently have, where my Y is equal to negative 4 times X plus B. And since I want B to be the only unknown variable, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in my X and Y for one instance to see what B would have to be in order to give me a balanced equation here. So negative 4 times that 2 is going to give me a negative 8. So I have negative 8 plus b on this side of the equation. I can add 8 to both sides, giving myself 2 is equal to b. So now I know that b has to equal 2. And I can fill that into my original equation to make sure I find the full answer, which is always a y is equal to negative 4x plus 2, a filled in formula. At that point, I would be done. If you have a graphing calculator, feel free to graph this and the original problem on your calculator. They should hit 90 degrees. Same thing with your first ones. Don't be afraid to put in those equations that you started with versus ended with and just double check that they are actually parallel. Your homework is posted on Classroom. Please let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.